right, so we have former Rookie of the Year. Well, still won the, the trophy, Rookie of the Year. Um, Razor Andrew Raycroft. What's up, man? Not much, not much. Just uh, getting back into the, or out of the summer routine and into normal routine. So It's such uh, a sucky routine to transition from, huh? It is, especially with the three uh, three kids under eight at home. It's, uh, it takes a month just to get them back to somewhat normal after eating ice cream every night all summer. Yeah, well, the cool thing about being an adult is you can do that every day, which is what I do, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess that's exactly. why I never played pro hockey. Because <laughs> of the ice cream. It was, it was all the ice cream? Yeah, and I'm sure there's like a thing in there about like having like talent and stuff, but yeah. it's fun. Overrated. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so th- thanks for doing this, Razor. And uh, <clears throat> so it's almost hockey season again. And uh, But before I get started asking you a couple questions, do you remember where the nickname Razor came from or who gave it to you? Um, well, as you know, the hockey guys aren't that well, maybe intelligent isn't the right word, but it probably is the right word, or creative. Uh, creative, so yeah. So with my last name, anyone that kind of has a Ray in either their first name or last name, it goes from Ray to Raise to Razor. It kind of seems to have that progression. So it would have been uh, it would have been in junior hockey when I first moved away that that kind of stuck. My buddies at home and. You know, even when I played growing up, it wasn't it wasn't out there. But uh, but yeah, junior hockey and it just kind of stuck all the way through. But but again, you can look up a few other Rays and you know, Ray Emery was a Razor too. So oh, was uh, he? Um, among other people. So yeah, so that, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty standard. Yeah, because I I remember thinking like once Krug started playing for the Bruins and there's a Kruger on Chicago. I was like, so is Kruger's nickname Krug and Krug is Kruger, because or that's I guess they're both Krug. Probably, <laughs> that's probably a very good guess. Yeah, that's exactly what would happen, especially if they're on the same team. They would flip yeah. flop, which is <laughs> you know typical hockey stuff. Now I know I think I probably told you this last time I saw you um, that because your nickname was Razor, and I think it was your first year with the Bruins that I was in. I forget what grade I was in, but. The Please razor. Don't say, don't say. <laughs> You're All right, eighth grade. I'll, I'll bump it up a grade. It was like eighth grade or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, the razor cell phone just came out, and yeah, I was like, right. "This is gonna be genius. I'm gonna save my money, get the number one cell phone out right now, the razor phone, and I'm gonna have Andrew Raycroft sign it <laughs> at like a game or one of these yeah. autograph things." And my dad was like what are you doing with your money? And I was like, I'm saving 200 bucks for a Razor phone. And he's like, I don't get it. And I was like, how do you not get it? He's Razor. The phone's Razor. He's like, no, I get it. But that much, like, have him sign his rookie card. I was like, no, this is way better. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, no, that's right. That 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 might age us both a little bit more than anything. Razor phone. <laughs> so ha, did, did anyone ever have you sign a Razor phone? I don't recall. It's certainly possible. I, I mean, there was always random, but usually, if I, that would be like after a game or when you're kind of getting mobbed and you're just kind of signing anything in front of you. I don't. I, I would remember if it was something. You're like, like I don't know what this is. Um, Here you go. Which, which I don't. Like outside in front of the garden where everyone used to stand yeah, at that exactly parking lot. Like when I'm trying to. Yeah, when I'm trying to get out of the parking lot after. A, <laughs> Five nothing loss. I'm not happy. Yeah, you're just kind of. You're like, I'm trying not to get t-boned here by the two-way traffic. It was yeah, it was nuts for a while there. Yeah, that was. uh, Well, I was one of those kids out there. I I apologize for that. (laughs) No, no. Most nights it was it was awesome. It was just those nights when you're uh, coming off a tough tough night inside. Yeah. uh, And you just want to go home. Yeah, you just want to go home and curl up on the couch. I remember uh, I back when you were playing with the bees. I I think I met you once or twice, like outside there, like it was like during the playoffs or something. And you and Bergeron, and I remember that every single fan 
would to you and Bergeron would be like, oh, you didn't take the Zamboni today? Referencing the commercial <laughs> you guys were in together. <laughs> and you yeah, got exactly. you were both uh, like, yeah. no, not today. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> so you're happy to not have that anymore? <laughs> yeah. Although it's, it's the funniest thing because that, that will last a long time, especially here. That comes up, you know, once a month I'll see someone that hadn't seen it before or didn't realize or you know came across it so it's uh that was a that was a good one i love that camera i don't know if we can put it up here if we'll get in trouble with facebook or youtube but i'll try and throw it up here but it yeah, just we bur- were the first ones to drive across the bridge i mean uh, were you really it, it, yeah we were like it was like a big deal to get the zamboni up there because it, it, it wasn't even close to being open yet um and all, we won an Emmy for that too, which is pretty funny. So you like, did? I have an Emmy in like in my parents' <laughs> That's bedroom, awesome. like in the basement somewhere. Yeah. No oh, kidding. I always thought you guys had like the entire Zaken Bridge shut down for the two of you on a Zamboni. <laughs> yeah, no, no. This was before the Zaken even opened up, so it was like still a construction zone. So oh, I, man. again, I don't know who pulled the strings on that to get us up there, but it was uh, it was cool. You were risking your lives for that Emmy, huh? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> Now you grew up in Ontario, right? Yeah. So yeah, who, Nova, Ontario. who who did you like grow up watching? Who who was your team? I was a Canadian. I was a huge Canadian fan. Um, hated the Bruins and loved Patrick Waugh. Oh uh, no, I didn't hang up on you there, Canadians fan. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would I, I would have been surprised, but yeah, no, I was. Uh, Man, man, I hated the garden, the old garden, like the the goal that down the wing, Ray Bork slapper. Like I, I have, like I knew all those games, but I was just always on the other side of it. So I knew a lot of '90s Boston Bruins hockey. Um, yeah. But again, it was I was crying when you were happy, or vice versa. Yeah. Well, you guys were happy more than us, so it was. <laughs> we were. Fortunately, yeah, 90, the, uh, 93 was, uh, that was a good run. I was like 13, so that was like perfect wheelhouse to uh, go on a run. So. It's funny how, like, how many, like, Montreal, like, kids that grow up and end up playing for the Bruins and, like, Boston area kids that end up playing for the Canadians. And yeah. I'm like, how can you do that? But, like, once you get to that level and you're like, oh, you'll pay me? Okay, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at... Yeah, draft night. You're not too. Uh, at least where where I was in the draft, I was not too concerned where I was uh, gonna land as long as uh, as long as I had a jersey on my my back by the end of the day. <laughs> now, you were um, involved in a trade with the current Bruin, Tuka Rask, and. Yeah he was traded from Toronto to Boston for you or the rights to Tuca. Now I'm always, I, I always ask everyone cause I'm always like with the alumni team and other guys like in the locker room now covering the Bruins. I'm always so curious about how that conversation goes when you find out you're traded. And sometimes you find out in the weirdest ways like Phyllis Bezito finding out from Bobby Orr. And I think Don Cherry, when he was like, if you, it, Phil was like, if you tell me I'm traded to New York, open the window and I'm going to jump out. And Bobby Orr went and opened the window for him. And then, like, I think Rick Middleton told me he found out by reading the newspaper the next day. And he was like, huh? <laughs> and I, I always feel like when they're like, yeah, the GM called me and whatever and said that I was traded, I can't imagine how that would go. Like, I don't know what my reaction would be. Of like my boss calling me, being like, "Yeah, we gave you away for the the uh, the guy you hate. Uh, he's he's coming here for you." <laughs> so what? How yeah. how did you find out like that? Did you get a phone call? Was it super awkward? Well, it, so I missed all the awkwardness, which was nice. Um, I was in Italy with my wife. Now we just had gotten engaged, maybe you know a few days before. A few days. Um, we. We were traveling Italy for like ten days, and so I got, I got the call like while I was sleeping, and woke up to a few messages. But you know, even then, like that was like oh, like pre iPhone and stuff. So it, it was kind of, it 
there wasn't a lot of action on my phone because I was in Europe and, you know, like we just didn't have data or Wi-Fi and things like that. So, um, so I missed all the awkward calls. I basically like talked to my agent and said, all right, I'll be home in four more days and we'll kind of get to it then. Tell everyone, <laughs> you know, I'll be back on the, on, on the map, you know, then. So, um, so certainly a little different than, than normal. Um, and especially the lack of, you know, it's hard to imagine just the lack of communication was even that possible back then. Yeah. So you, you had a few texts and messages on your Razor phone? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it certainly was, it, it was, I never had the Razor phone, um, but ah. it was definitely some kind of a flip Nokia, something like that <laughs> at that point. That's uh, awesome. I, I was pretty delayed on, the, uh, on my phone purchases. <laughs> now, there was, um, well, you're, you're back now in the Boston area, and you're playing with the alumni team, right? Yeah, yeah, they they uh, they got me back for the uh, for the big game at Gillette, and then um, I had a blast last winter. You know, hanging out with the guys, and it's a, kind of my only only way to get out of the house through the winter. So um, it's a blast. Yeah, how was that game at Gillette? And and you were playing net for that one, right? I was. That was that was the only way I was getting on the ice for that one. So it was awesome. It was. Uh, I was certainly a little hesitant going in. Um, not playing goalie for a long time and I knew there ended up being a lot of people but uh, I'm really it was it was a great experience and a lot of laughs and, and just a kind of a cool cool way to you know continue you know at least have another story in my career anyway yeah now leading up to that game like growing up my parents bringing me to alumni games I'm used to them being like older guys and like <laughs> guys you hear about but that was the first alumni game. I was like, these guys aren't on. They were just playing. They can't be on this team. They're too good still. Like you, Hal Gill, Sergey Samsonov, and then all the guys the Canadians had, like Theodore. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. These guys were playing when I, I had a flashback to high school. And I was like, this is an actual Bruins Canadians game. This isn't like an alumni game. This is a real game for me. <laughs> Was it weird yeah. to be out there again with like Samsonov and like against those Canadians that you had like some big games against? Yeah, absolutely. We were, and I mean, we were all kind of in on it too. We were all kind of looking at each other, you know, saying or thinking the same thing. Um, it's amazing how, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight years flies by. And, um, and in hockey, obviously, that's like, you know, those are dog years. So, um, we definitely, you know, talked about that, and, and at the same time, that was kind of the best part, um, is seeing guys like Sammy and, and Marco Sturm, and I see skills do too much anyways, but <laughs> um, seeing those guys and, and kind of hanging out with them again after, you know, a pretty extended period of time, that was certainly the, uh, the highlight of the weekend. Yeah, and, like, I think it's really cool that even, like, you're from Ontario, and, like, Hal Gill is from Massachusetts, but... Um, like you're from Ontario and then all these other guys that just end up coming back or even if they played like a year in Boston, I'm always like, why did you come back? Like you're from this place and then you played most of your career in like a warm state and then you came back to Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so many guys come back and like, was your plan always to come back to Boston? Um, essentially it was, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously I have, you know, my wife's from Foxborough. Her family lives in Rentham and Norton and the Cape. So, um, you know, at that, with that in mind, you know, I wasn't getting her away from Massachusetts. So, um, you know, I can't say that this would have been it no matter what. But in saying that, you know, my two kids are born here. I, I mean, I love it here. I'm close enough to home to get home, but... I really wouldn't want to live anywhere else, to be honest. You know, you're, we're on the ocean. Um, Boston, just a, a great city, and it, it's a per, for. I know for a lot of guys, it, it feels like home without being home. It's not always, the, you know, we're a lot of us are from small towns where you don't necessarily have the opportunities or the culture, or the schools that for your kid. Yeah. Uh, but it still has that feel here of. Canada and you know obviously anyone from this area knows it's it's a, as big
big as it's of a place that it is or as many people as there is, it's really small and everybody kind of knows everyone one way or the other, um, which is, you know, kind of comforting. And, and that's another reason why, you know, I love it here and, you know, look forward to, I'm going to be here for the next, you know, for the rest of my life, essentially. So, um, you know, it's home. Awesome. Well, I'm, I was super psyched to hear that you were back and with the Bruins alumni team and just to know that we got you back on the alumni team. We, and we still got Tuca and Toronto gets nothing. So that's, (laughs) 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 so we win. Um, but (laughs) thanks again for doing this, man. And, um, I'll let you go because I know you got a lot going on and, uh, but I'd, I'd love to have you on again, and if you're ever able to make it down to the studio, I'd love to have, have you in the studio, and I'll for sure be seeing you around the rinks and uh, just want to make sure it's cool if I still like go on eBay and get a Razor phone and have you sign. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Go for it. All right, cool. Um, it was my pleasure, Josh. Right, next time, yeah, for sure, we'll do it in the studio. Uh, and, yeah, it was, uh, it was a blast and my pleasure. And call me anytime. Awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Uh, We'll talk soon. I'll see you around for sure, huh? Yeah, absolutely, man. Okay, cool. All right, see you, dude. Yeah, bye. Bye. I love it. But, yeah, this is the new set, and uh, I know I was on the phone with Razor, Andrew Raycroft, uh, but I got to get it set up so that, or just get a studio phone, you know, but that's time and like learning how to set the whole thing up but right now it's the uh it's the cell phone on the mic so you people listening while you're at work or in the car or whatever sounds the same as a radio interview right i mean for those of you that watch on youtube and facebook it'll look weird with me holding a, a phone on the speaker but it gets the job done right all right so um yeah this is the new studio and you know, we're still working things out. Uh, I just wanted to get that interview out with Razor. Me and him have been talking about getting it done for a while. Uh, Bruins preseason uh, is underway. The season is almost here. We're going to have a lot more players on this year. Um, I know last year it took like half the season to get some of the guys on, but, you know, there's there's the business part of it. So, um, let me just check that. Oh. Um, yeah, so breaking the ice on Twitter, I don't really, or BTI CE, so like ice, but BT ice podcast on Twitter. I don't even use my own Twitter really. Uh, big on Instagram. Instagram at not Josh Stolen, at breaking the ice podcast, and got some big announcements coming for on the radio. I know I covered it for a certain sports station. <clears throat> last year. Um, but this year, be on the lookout for another uh, radio station that actually responds to me. So, Breaking the Ace podcast, at Not Josh Stolen. Hope you like the new set. We're going to have awesome guests lined up coming in, sitting right here on this uh, this cushion. So, keep it here. And thank you to Andrew Raycroft for being on. And the wife needs me. So I'm out of here. Have a good week, guys. And go Bruins.